Hi, I'm Mel from Wildly Curious, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a flaming torch where you can embrace your inner Indiana Jones, maybe uh, explore a tomb with this, or perhaps just use it to light your bushcraft camp. Here's what you're going to need in terms of materials. First of all, a green stick. It should be thicker than your thumb, but not as thick as your wrist. Then you're going to need some pine resin. That's what this is here. A few pine cones. Here I've got some fat wood. Here I've got some silver birch bark. Um, a few rags, cotton rags, that's optional. Um, and then I've got some fluffy seed heads. We're using reed mace here. If the pine resin is hard to come by, or you've only got a little bit, you can always instead use wax. Candle wax, I've got paraffin wax here, but soya wax would work just as well. If the pine resin that you find is fresh and, to, and still squishy, you don't even have to melt it. You can just push it into the torch and it will work just as well. In terms of equipment to use, you're going to need a knife, possibly an axe, a mallet and a pot that can go over the fire. So the first thing to do is to split your stick. I'm going to split this across the top and then um, uh, going in the other direction as well. I'm going to split it about that far and then increase the size of the split by twisting my knife like that and then turn the stick around, place the blade perpendicular with the other um, split and then go again. Twist the knife and remove. If you're using a stick which is thicker than this one, um, you might want to split it again so that you end up with more than four parts. But for this size, sort of size stick, um, four is going to be perfect. The other end of the stick is going to need a point on it so that you can stick it into the ground. The next thing to do is to push in some twigs to hold these prongs apart. Um, I'm going to use fat wood because it is really flammable, so you don't have to, you could just use twigs, but um, if it's a flaming torch, then why not go super flammable? So push the twigs in and slide them down with your thumbs like that, and then go the other way as well. And then I'm going to push in um, a pine cone. That one's too big. Let's push this one in. The pine cone helps, as well as being flammable, also helps hold the other stuff in. And get a couple in here, I think. At this stage, if you were using um, soft pine resin, I'm not, but if you were using soft fresh pine resin, this is where you can start to squeeze it into, um, uh, into the pine cone. That will help it to stick. I'm going to melt mine though, so we'll use that later. The next thing I'm going to put in is my reed mace. Any fluffy seed head will do at all. Um, I'm just going to take some bits of that and poke that in wherever I can. This will help to absorb and soak up all of the um, wax, all the pine resin, depending on what you're using.
Okay, now the next bit is optional. You may or may not want to add some cotton rag. The rag works for two things. It helps to hold your torch together and stop all the seed heads falling out. It also helps to absorb some of the wax and pine resin mixture. So I just started in the middle and I'm just going round folding it over and then back round. And then I'm just going to tie it off. Lastly, I'm going to add some silver birch bark. Silver birch bark is super flammable because of all the oils it contains and it, it's really useful to use this as a wick. So I'm going to see if I've got space down here at the bottom to poke some of this in. I might have to move my fat wood down a bit. in this side as well. So with the silver birch bark it's a really good idea to leave it poking out a little bit so that you can set light to this and it will set light to the rest. Okay so that's pretty much ready to go. You could add any other flammable um, tinder in there that you like as well. There are no hard and fast rules here. Um, you just want something that's going to keep it burning for quite a long time. Okay, I think we're ready to light our fire and dip it into our pine resin and wax. When melting wax and resin, use a nice deep pot. Wax and resin is really flammable, which is why we're using it. And you don't want a shallow pot where the flames could lick over the top and ignite your um, mixture. So just keep an eye on it. Okay, so our wax and pine resin is melted and now it's time to dip. So we're gonna remove this from the fire because we don't want to drip that mixture into the fire. And I'm gonna tilt this and then dip in the torch. It smells really good. I'm gonna take it out and just hold it over that pot for a minute just until it begins to cool and set. Once it's cool and set for a few seconds, you can repeat the process, building up layers. Obviously I'm keeping the torch horizontal at this point and I'm not tilting it upwards where it could drip down onto my hands. There we are. You can repeat that process as many times as you like, but three dippings should, uh, should be sufficient. So now that the torch is ready to use, uh, actually I'm going to save it for, for tonight because it's much better um, to light it in the dark. Uh, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a hole to put this into. So because it's got all of this on the top, I don't want to be hitting it into the ground with a mallet um, directly. So I'm going to make myself a pilot hole using a sharpened stick. There we are. And I'm going to leave that there for tonight so I can remember where I've made the hole and um, come back later and set light to it. Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, it's now dark. We've been joined by some tawny owls. You might hear them. There's also some sheep uh, making some sounds in the background. Um, right, the torch is now in the ground. Uh, remember, we're putting it in the ground and not holding it because once this is a light, uh, molten drippy stuff will, will come off of it. So what we don't, definitely don't want is to hold it um, and have that um, coming down onto our hand or onto our arm. So it's stuck into the ground and it's firmed around it like that. So what I'm going to do is, this. these are easy to light if you put them in a fire, but we haven't got a fire now, the fire's gone out, so I'm going to use a lighter for this. Um, you can dip it in the fire or you can, or you can use a lighter. So I'm going to light the um, silver birch bark that's sticking out and then once it's alight we're going to time it uh, to see how we go. Right, let's do it. Okay, let's start the timer. So the torch has been burning now for about two minutes and you can see, if I step back, you can see just how much of the area um, it lights up. It's, it's giving off a pretty good light. been joined by a little toad as well. Come to get in on the action. We're at 14 minutes now and it's not quite lighting up such a large area as it was before. Uh, but it is still very strong. We're still going and we are now at 20 minutes. still going at uh, 25 and a half minutes. Oh, quite a lot has just fallen off. Uh, we've still got a bit going though, but there's quite a lot on the ground now too. Um, we are at 28 minutes. So this torch burnt for almost half an hour, which is pretty good. Um, uh, just a little reminder that if you're going to have a go at doing this, um, the, the stick will stay hot for ages, uh, even once the torch has gone out. So make sure you've got a suitable means of extinguishing it. Um, either take the stick out of the ground and put it in your fire pit, or um, put the whole thing in a bucket of water just to make sure that you've properly extinguished it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>